Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, April 6, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Using job offers to gain individuals' trust is nothing really new, but the latest campaign is using LinkedIn in order to come up with more convincing but still fairly mass-produced emails. In these emails, it essentially just takes your job title from LinkedIn, adds offer to the subject, and then includes a zip file that it hopes the mark will open. And this this particular zip file will then install the more X malware uh, Trojan that can then be used to infiltrate a network. More X is fairly non-specific malware. It's not really associated with a particular threat actor. It is actually offered sort of as malware as a service. So whoever would like to breach a certain type of organization can essentially hire uh, the people behind Morex in order uh, to launch uh, the attack. This is, of course, a very spammy email and uh, probably not going to trick a lot of people that are listening uh, to this podcast. I just want to point out that this sort of a recurring theme where job offers, even sometimes job offers made in person or over the phone, are being used uh, to sort of steal information. This is a very uh, difficult balance sometimes to find. I also talk to people that essentially aren't able uh, to look for a job anymore because because they consider any offer that comes in a potential a trick to solicit information from them. In general, stay with trusted recruiters. And of course, that's where social networking sometimes helps is to build up a network that is able to assist you if you're looking for a job. And then we got an interesting exploit for an older vulnerability, CVE 2019-8761. The vulnerability itself was patched in October of 2019, but I haven't really seen an exploit for it. And it's kind of interesting as opening a simple text file in Apple's text edit could lead to the exfiltration of arbitrary files. And the basic bug here is actually not that terribly uncommon. It's sometimes referred to as mime sniffing. And essentially what's happening here is that you receive what looks like a normal text file. It has the .txt extension, but the content is actually HTML. And the software here, a text edit, will parse the HTML, including style sheets, for example, and remote references or references to other local files files, even though the file claimed to be just a simple text file. And that's really sort of how uh, the exploit works. Uh, you send a text file that contains HTML. Inside that HTML, you are then using style sheets uh, to import uh, local files and then essentially exfiltrate those files. It doesn't look like JavaScript is executed in text edit, but of course that would allow for even more possibilities here. And concerns about privacy in the programming language Rust seem to have gotten new steam with it now being declared an official bug. The problem here is that compiled binaries in Rust do include the full path of where the source was located, which of course often is a developer's home directory and does include the developer's username or other details that a developer may not necessarily want to release like for example a project name or something like this that is part of the path to the source code. This issue apparently was first raised a few years ago but hadn't really sort of been taken serious. Now it's finally become an actual bug so maybe it will get fixed even though of course there are a number of workarounds. This is actually not a terribly unique problem. Office documents have done things like this in the past. 
Not aware of hand of a programming language that does this by default as you are compiling binaries, but certainly other creative tools and so have included the full path where the file was created as part of metadata. And then just a little issue that I have observed, don't really have an article or so for it, but with the Facebook leak that I mentioned yesterday, there are a number of sites now that have sprung up that offer to search the data for your information. Be a little bit careful, of course, with those sites. Uh, they may not necessarily be legit. And of course, well, you have to supply information to these sites uh, to have your information searched. So you may actually provide them with more information than they had to start out with. And well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.